know that when the brain is in a creative mode, it has a different organisational pattern to the different regions of the brain working together. We're only at the very cusp of understanding what happens. We know that very young brains actually have some capacities that tend to be lost as we grow older. And in fact, we have a whole session today on babies' brains. So today we're going to explore how the brain creates, what happens to the brain, and how can we find perhaps ways of enhancing our creativity through understanding better how the neuroscience of creativity works. The question my group is trying to ask is what's going on in babies' minds? So we're looking at babies in the first year. Um, and the way we do this is we're using brain imaging to look inside the brain, not just at the anatomy, but also at the brain function. If you or I were learning a difficult motor skill, like trying to perhaps learn to tango, um, you would, you know, we would have to think through every step, and it's a really uh, deliberate process. It seems that perhaps even babies, when they're learning to do their first, uh, learning to crawl or learning to walk, they might be doing something deliberate and, and, and intentional like that. The second application of this research is to try to understand what's going wrong in babies who have neonatal brain injury. Um, this, at the moment, it's really difficult for neonatologists to know for any given infant uh, what, where, you know, what sorts of problems will that infant develop any problems or what might they be. At the moment, the clinical standard of care is basically to wait and see what happens in development. Maybe at three you'll learn they have language difficulties or at six they have behavioural difficulties. So if we can use imaging to understand how the brain is developing, um, we can potentially start to see things going off track and uh, hopefully that will lead to ways to, um, to get them back on track. My own shtick on this would be that creativity involves thinking of multiple ways, multiple approaches to solve a particular problem. So the bottom line, I suppose, is that, um, is that you engage the brain in many different sorts of ways in creative thought, while in analytical and single thought, you're, you're sort of, uh, you may be very efficient. You don't want a particularly creative dentist when he's trying to do a root canal. But if you're trying to solve more complex problems with the artist, you engage a different mode of thinking. Today, I was discussing the fact that art and science are really not so different. Even though in lots of people's minds, they're very separate entities, but the truth is they overlap quite a lot. In more recent decades, we've discovered that artistic outputs can tell us a lot about the functioning of the brain. Yeah, I think the question of creativity is, is a great one, and it's brilliant that we've had this week of you know, creative brain, because for me, creativity really taps into novelty. It's combining ideas in a novel way, or looking at something with a novel perspective, or thinking about something in a way that hasn't maybe been done before. So as Manny said, this process of having a defocused state of brain, which allows these novel associations to form, is the basis of a lot of creativity, including arts, including comedy, including lots of other spheres of life. So uh, as a visual artist, I'm very passionate about how art can be used to improve the health outcomes of different populations. I work with older adults living with dementia and other cognitive impairment. I work with young adults and young uh, youth people and youth who actually have mental health challenges. Um, and for me, art is like a light, and uh, naturally people gravitate towards light. And uh, so, um, light liberates, and art does liberate. Creativity sets people free create opportunity for them to be able to express themselves in a way that um, they are not judged because of their outcome of their visual representation. The process is very key for their healing and I see that playing out in some of the engagement we have had in Nigeria. Uh, we've seen people who actually were like inpatient in the hospital, who were part of our art programs, a part of our music program, and then the art really helped them to like um, escape kind of like provide that way out for them and then today they are coming back to give back to where they were once patient. So you see the impact and the relevance of, uh, of art and creativity in helping to transform the lives of people, healing them, providing health for them. But most importantly also like how do I help others now that I'm helped? Which I think is very critical and very important. 
So today we're here discussing uh, creativity in the brain and my own research focuses on memory and how memories are stored in the brain. And the flip side of learning is forgetting, forgetting of information. And we often think about forgetting as a nuisance, as something that is an inevitable bug of having an imperfect brain. My research suggests and others that forgetting may be more of a feature, that forgetting is the letting go of information in a way that is adaptive to how you can behave in your environment. We also think that forgetting is reversible, that memories that are apparently forgotten can be retrieved in future uh, when you need those. So I think that this is useful for understanding the neuroscience of, forget of creativity. Uh, because if we're going to be creative, we need to not only be learning new things, but we need to be forgetting other things. And we need to be rearranging our information about the world so that we can come up with new ideas or new concepts that may be useful for doing other things. Absolutely, it's so important for us to, to work outside of silos. You know, universities can be quite siloed. Uh, you can have you know, the, the School of Medicine over here and you can have the Arts Humanities or Creative Art Practice over on the other side of campus and never the twain shall meet. And if that's true in universities where people are interested in talking to one another and interested in co-creating knowledge, well then it's all the more so important when you think about how do we engage with social actors and other key stakeholders. So a week like this that brings everybody together not just with a national, but with an international footprint, is phenomenal and it's something I hope to see replicated in other parts of, of life. Uh, so, I, so I think it's very important to explore the union of art and science, or art and medicine. Um, we have to start thinking of a non-pharmacological ways or utilizing those approaches to help people to find themselves because sometimes people are sick because they are lost <laughs> right so but art can bring them back home and when people are back home they are well it's about um, creating that enabling platform where we can coexist and make the world a better place the science is not superior the art is not superior we are all on the same level with the same goal to help to heal and to bring hope